Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science and Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about Google's quantum chip or Velo chip. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly we are talking about? You have to understand Google has a division known as quantum AI. Do not ask me why the heck they put AI there, but they did. And this division has been slowly chipping away at this problem in 2012. So they started it and they have been working on it. Now, any corporation that is significantly large enough and does have good enough uh, cash flow generally always have a side business of R&D department. Because again, you do need to invest long term for certain things, certain hard things. So this is a normal thing. So their whole job is to make a quantum computer real. Now paper and principle the idea is from Richard Feynman long ago. We got the idea that it should be possible but okay physics, engineering, economics. We are uh, only at physics level yet. Okay, bring it to engineering level, meaning somebody could engineer it and build it. So that's their job. And in order to help that, because this is so, it's not cutting edge, it's bleeding edge, that they have uh, universities supporting it. For example, University of Chicago is helping them and University of Tokyo is also helping them. Well, plus $50 million. Now you're like, wait a minute, for Google, $50 million? Yeah, uh, investors do not like to invest money in R&D center. They are like, can we run it for free? Uh, so 50 million is a lot from an R&D center point of view. So that's there. Now they have been slowly chipping away at it and they made the first useful-ish kind of tool, a fox tail in 2017. That's the first silicon, it's not silicon, it's like the first chip they made. Uh, and then Batista Cohn in 2018 and then Sia uh, Moore in 2019. And Willow is the latest iteration of it right now that was released in December 2024 just recently so to say so basically this is a branch and before this guy was there that was already there it was they were keep chipping away at it it's like tuk, 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 tuk. they are coming the long way out so to say and this is the actual uh, superconducting silicon so to say so what is the deal with this willow now much higher quantum coherence what does that mean well uh, you have to understand this way uh, quantum computers are like fusion so if this then that kind of scenario happens so quantum computer works on instead of bits it works on qubits now sounds good enough but you have to understand qubits are in what we call superposition so they do not have a binary value on or off they could have lots of value uh, we generally uh, collapse it quote unquote to four values in one bit and then we have it pairing with another uh, qubit now here's the pairing part that pairing happens with what we call uh, basically spooky accelerated distance so it's just a pair bonds on it uh, quantum entanglement as we call it now that we can gut it like to achieve that that's why it requires absolute zero cooling now again I let me be very clear you cannot achieve absolute zero you just get so close that it is it's just more than good enough because again you are not measuring in Kelvin you are measuring it milli Kelvin so we are very cold like ludicrously cold so cold that nothing can actually work at that sort of uh, temperature so they have to use helium 3 and helium 4 and their uh, variations in order to actually achieve that cooling because again you, you can use liquid nitrogen to get down to very low level you can use liquid helium to get down to almost zero but to get down to almost micro Kelvin then you have to use inside helium as in like helium 3 to helium 4 ratios I have linked a video down below from Veritasium it's a genuinely good one a professor explains it quite well so yeah it's not easy and why do we need to cool it down so quantum entanglement states last long enough to be useful so all of these things quantum entanglement and uh, this and that qubits and all that we know how to do it we have been doing it problem is they were never stable long enough meaning we will be lucky if we can run one or two uh, instances of it before it collapses and then we have to redo the system then do it again so this time they have scaled the time horizon from from five microsecond to 100 microsecond not millisecond microsecond it's not even one uh, continuous second so you cannot even run a giant algorithm through it so yeah it's basically it's like fusion where it's like fusion reactor now is powered on for longest ever it's like how long yeah 11 seconds it's like so same thing and uh, superconducting super cooled uh, and it has 105 qubits now like wait a minute that number sounds low yes and no yes they are low in order to make anything useful to run uh, any uh, significant amount of algorithm you do need a bit more but be mindful it scales up exponentially because qubits are not binary they are in superposition so the numbers of calculation that only 105 can do is exponentially higher 
exponentially it's not like a little bit better no it's it is a miniature supercomputer fundamentally speaking although in only very specific way because again time horizon is not it's not stable if we can have this like let's say one hour or two hour then yeah the end but we are not there yet not even close and again this is their milestone uh, timeline they have been chipping away at it it's like beyond classic quantum error correction and this uh, long-lived uh, logic qubits that's their next milestone uh, creating a logic gate and then engineering scale up then large scale error correction quantum computer. it's like they have this sort of milestones and they are doing it and this is from their own uh, website uh, where you can have what the hell they are doing so this graph shows how difficult something is and how useful something is so in useful part you have quantum machine learning now is would that be useful that would be short up take money quantum uh, protein folding short up take money so there are a lot of things where it's like if you can actually do it short up take money but uh, where are we right now well we are here completely useless or but idiotically difficult r c s this is not me saying that this is useless. This is useless from their point of view. Uh, again, this point is useless, uh, but difficult. It's ludicrously. And again, that's how they validated that 105 qubits are actually doing things rather than just like, oh, it's a thing. No, it's doing thing. It's actually crunching things. So that's why this is such a quote unquote big ish deal. Now, what makes it into a big deal? Well, here's the deal. Qubits are inherently unstable. Uh, we have been doing this from 1990s then why we don't we have a full-fledged computer issue is then when you froze it down to like almost a micro kelvin level it still is not stable enough and there is a, another problem once you start to add multiple qubits they themselves inst introduce error so basically you added one it added one more error you added another it added another error you added 10 qubits it added 10 error bits so it's reached a point where there was no point of scaling it up until you can that problem will be solved so they solved this problem so scaling was pointless now they can push through it error piling up basically they finally figured out how to make sure that error does not pile up meaning now if they make 10,000 qubits by 10,000 qubits it will be actually useful rather than just okay just 10,000 bits of error so that's why that was a very big jump going from three five to seven this is the whole point this is why it is on paper like this is a big uh, jump on a research paper point of view not a real quantum computer but a research paper point of view it's like yeah so far everybody was just like hopes and dreams right now it's like oh we can almost see light at the end of the tunnel again time horizon also have to be stretched large scale uh, you know error correction has to be done so many things are there but on paper it can be done because now we have done it in miniature scale so that's there and <clears throat> fundamentally that's what they solved that the fact that you can actually scale it up and do not get drowned in error rates fundamentally key cast performance in benchmark uh, random uh, cricket sampling and let that be clear this number of like classical supercomputer will take this long to crunch it nobody's doing this again it's a quantum benchmark it's basically like a, you know how graphics uh, card companies like our graphics card is super awesome in our benchmark that's the exact same thing and again, not me saying it, Google itself is saying it, but why they are running the benchmark? To prove it. And again, other quantum computer people can also run it. So they can double check it, verify it. There are multiple companies like IBM, China, things of that nature. So that's why this uh, benchmark is kind of useful. But it is a big deal that they are finally pushing through that error uh, bottleneck, so to say. Now, there has been a lot of talks about doom, the quantum computer doom that's going to happen. That is like no more encryption or security in classic computer because fundamentally, uh, whatever security you're going to do, it, they can just uh, breach past it. And like, you know, China in few years can bypass all the security they can have only in the whole internet. There will not be a single point of security left in all of that. So digital encryption key, they can just make it on their end and bye bye security encryption. Internet will no longer be viable and uh, super AI could be done because, okay, this is one aspect of neural networks is that you go from a to b to c to d to e these are layers the neural network layers or weights so layer by layer now here's deal this is how classic computer does tang 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 how does quantum computer goes all at the same time so yes on mathematics on paper if you really have a giant enough uh, quantum computer in terms of machine learning it would be horrifyingly good like it would be like uh, how long it took to train? Yeah, uh, one femtosecond. It just had to run it once. That's how good it would be because it will be run every single variation, every single layer simultaneously. Assuming your quantum computer does not collapse in 100 microsecond, but uh, assuming you push through that and you do not have error, yes, the things that can be done is genuinely on paper scary uh, or something far worse because again, everybody is pouring money, be it IBM, be it China, everybody is pouring money. So, doom and this make me lose hope in humanity 
because this is flat out brain damage. I have no idea how the heck humanity keeps forgetting to read history books. We've been there. We have been down this road because it's really if you know computers long enough, like uh, early stages of computer, Apollo mission computer. It was like a tiny silicon at that point in time. They used to have um, a rope memory. I'm not even joking. <laughs> rope donut memories. Uh, there are some videos if you really dare to look into it, how RAM used to look, uh, you know, magnetic donut memory. So that time, um, once people started to make computers, I am talking early days, like 1980s kind of days, encryptions were built. If we figured it out, we're going to need encryption. Human cannot be trusted. So we built encryption. Now, here's the, many of these encryption were used by a lot of companies and this became the backbone. Now, here's the, computers grew exponentially in the early years of 2000. So like, you know, megahertz became gigahertz very quickly. So all the algorithms, all the control uh, systems, encryption that were built, that was uncrackable by the like 1980s they were lol projects by 2002 so and again many companies did not update their uh, like you know how they are storing id and password and whoops somebody can just brute force it now and brute forcing used to take like you know a hacker man is like doing a lot of things and like you know filtering and helping the computer is like run it trrr, done so this has happened and again this keeps happening so that is why you keep hearing the updates security updates and all that we have to keep upgrading the algorithm so uh RSA algorithm series encryption key series that we utilize that has gone through multiple iterations brick by brick hash codes brick by brick it has gone through like oh it was super easy to upgrade oh it took like 2010 to computer to do it now, okay now we have upgraded it. so it will take 2030s computer to do it easily so again we have been doing this this chicken and egg game we have been doing this long ago so and in terms of Humanity, this is what we call sword and shield paradox, meaning you will never have a sword that will not have a shield, you will never have a shield that will not have a sword. You will, they have to always grow in sync, so to say. So, of course, you can have milliseconds benefit in like, oh, for this instant, sword was better, then you're like, okay, shield was better. Then, like, they always happen like this. So this whole point of uh, like, you know, quantum can breach through the encryption. How do we know that? Because again, no physical quantum computer exists. So how the heck do we know? Well, we run through the mathematics. Now, what about the people who are running the mathematics? Well, they themselves built a quantum secure encryption system. Now, again, I do not like the idea of quantum secure. That's pushing it too much. And again, our history is like that. It's like, bro, we thought it was secure. Then it's like, it's just resistant. It's like, you know, nothing is bulletproof. It's just bullet resistant. So quantum resistance encryption is under development as of now. So instead of uh, RSA, they are going letter space cryptography. And yes, that cannot be cracked. How do we know? Exact benefit of quantum computers is in numbers. You use a different system that does not benefit from quantum superpositioning. So you can bypass it. Again, there will be a limit where it's like they just have so much brute force, quote unquote, in a quantum computer where it's like, yeah, I can just run hex trillions of combination and brute force it instead of, let's say, brute forcing in 10 years, we can brute force it in, let's say, two hours. Yeah, that could happen. But okay. That's why, brick by brick, day by day. And yes, that can run on classic computer. So very people who are selling you the fear, they are the one who is getting employed to create a countermeasure. And again, code-based cryptography, multi, what, multi-variable cryptographic system, all of those things are there that makes it resistant. So you cannot be just like China is like, lol. You can't lol it. Oh, and there is another aspect. Everybody will know who did it. Because again, Helium 3 is not something that's like, lol. It's not something hacker man in their basement. We have freaking zero Kelvin uh, cooling system. No, no. Liquid nitrogen is hard to do. Liquid helium, ludicrously hard to do. Helium-3 cooling, yeah, good luck. That requires a university level dedication to even attempt it. That's not going to happen in basement. And again, it's quantum level thing. It's It was difficult in 1950. It was difficult in 1930. It is difficult in 2000. It will be difficult future also. Because again, there are certain laws of physics that are like, yeah, inherently this is complex. So fundamentally. Now, then why we are so hell bent on developing uh, quantum computers? Well, remove the hype part of it, remove the world ending fear out of it. It is a very good tool. Now, why is that? Well, uh, in the early years of quantum computer, um, as in like quantum science itself, the quantum technology itself, people realized that quantum behaves differently. So they're like, okay, let's simulate it in computers. Yeah, the computer started catching on fire. Computer could not simulate the superposition that exists in real life. It's like, wait a minute, isn't superposition requires uh, like, you know, cryogenic cooling? Or no, superposition requires it that when we want to control it. In, in nature, it remains there. It's stable. It's uh, not stable. It's stable, not stable. It, it like, you know, uh, 
like if you go deep enough where it like particles comes into existence, goes out of existence, that sort of thing happens. So if you want to simulate that, we know the mathematics, we have tested it. It's a real, it's here. It's just that full supercomputer will be spent in order to just compute four or five molecules. That's not good enough. And again, it will never be possible to do that in classic computer because of the mathematics. The moment you scale how many possible variables can exist in a you know, molecular chain, yeah, then number scales up faster than, you know, our classic computer scales. So that's why in 19, I think, 70s, uh, people realized we have to do it on quantum computer itself. There is no scenario where classical binary gate system will do. And not even a photon gate system will do because photon computers are still binary computers. They are just faster. So instead of running at gigahertz, it can run at petahertz. So that's why quantum computer is fundamentally a useful tool. That's why people have been working on it from 1970. Now, could about, about encryption and all that, again, I could easily see a uh, mega corporation using it as a penetration testing, where it's like, hey, bro, you are still using your ancient uh, encryption. Please upgrade it. I could see that because, again, only ludicrously rich people can even afford it. But let's assume some universities finally got it, a real working quantum computer. Then what? Well, it can do quantum simulation. Now, why is that important? This is why it's important. We know amino, amino acid. We know what is this, this whole thing. It's proteins. It's protein acting out. That's it. Nothing more is there. So we know what elements are going there. We know what uh, molecules are going there. We know what compounds are being made. But that compound becomes string of amino acid. So far, so good. Our science, we good it. We got this. We can simulate this. Then the amino acid becomes into protein. So good. We got this. We good. Then protein folds. Our supercomputer, I give up. We cannot simulate this folding. We are just brute forcing it. Since we figured out that we need to solve this, only then we can figure out how to make actual medication. Right now, we are literally in medical terms, running on hopes and dreams. <laughs> this needs to be solved. Only then we'll have, like, you are this person, you're going to need this medication. This is tailor-made for you. Your problem solved. Lot of things that we just cannot do. Like, why do you think it takes uh, so much trial and error in order to test the medication? We cannot simulate this part. We have been trying, brute forcing the hell out of it from supercomputers and they are becoming okay-ish and to give you context how complex this is, and there is an AI algorithm just tries to approximate it. It's like this is nigh impossible because again it's a quantum property, how uh, atoms and molecules itself is vibrating on that quantum scale, it's fundamentally different. It's like you cannot simulate it in a holistic way. You are trying to, okay, what if I approximate and approximate, but you collapse the superposition. But in real life, it is in superposition. It's not in terms of temperature, but in terms of how it's interacting, how the waveforms are collapsing, how which photon is being ejected, which electromagnetic wave is interacting, which electron is jumping. All of that has to be simulated simultaneously. So that ha does need a quantum computer. So pharmaceutical people, sure to take money. Biochemistry, sure to take money. Encryption people, eh, okay, you can use it. Machine learning, eh, again, because you can make a machine learning algorithm. It's like, what's the point of it? Because again, we are good enough with other things. This cannot be done in classic computer. Let that be very clear. Cannot be done in classic computer. You just brute force it versus machine learning. We are good enough here with machine learning we have in our mobile phones. So that's why the brain damage part of it is very frustrating. It's just like, we know how to deal with this. We have been there, done that, got this. It's old school. It's in history books now. <sighs> So this was my presentation on uh, Google's uh, basically Volo supercomputer, uh, future ending <laughs> quantum computer. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it with a friend, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press just like, press it twice to show me a disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free and as always, thanks for watching.